started off being a carer when my granny took Norwell, so I was caring a bit for her. So then I decided that I quite enjoyed what I was doing. I like meeting people, their faces, when they see you, they're cheery, or see you tomorrow. Okay, they, they are just happy to see someone. Oh, yeah. The day in the life of a carer can be very varied. They can have up to about 14 service users in a day. You enjoy your job? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that, huh? I help my clients with every kind of personal care. Uh, shopping, we do domestic as well. We do the cleaning in some places. It means I can stay in my own house. Uh, I, otherwise, I would have to go into a, a nursing home of some sort, which would deprive me of all my independence. And at the same time, I'm not yet ready to uh, not to do things for myself. Oh, what's that? Oh, what's me? Okay. When we take on any individuals. I come out to the house to meet them before the care starts and we go through the social work care plan and then I'll ask them what is wanting it in his own individual care plan. Um, it's all person centred so the way that it reads to the carers when they're reading it, it'll say I wish to remain as independent as possible or I would like, um, so it's all from Bill's point of view. I've been a home carer for 19 years. And there's been a lot of changes in the 19 years. There's a lot of people needing a lot more help with hoists and steadies. So that is a lot more work for us, a lot heavier work. Perception always was that you go into someone and you provide a cup of tea and provide social stimulation. Now it's a lot more complex and it's, it's a lot of personal care, complex needs with a lot of equipment, a lot more pressure on the carers because they're actually having to do a more professional job now and they're doing a lot of the things that the nurses actually do. We are now getting asked more neurological care, Huntington's, motor neuron disease, multiple sclerosis. It puts a huge amount of strain on the company, both in terms of finding, again, the right staff, but also in terms of training, which has a huge cost involved in that as well. Well, the girls do have a half an hour to spend with my mum, which they normally do most of the time. And on most occasions, practically all the time, that is the case. Sometimes we'll have an accident which takes up more time for the girls to get mum clean, etc. But on the whole, the half hour is enough time for them. We are now running five minutes late due to the last client uh, taking full time, which is, which is normal there at that last house. Because we're out of the town now, uh, and going to the next village, uh, there's no travelling time, so Unfortunately, we're always running late here. They do ever so well, but I find it a stressful job myself, and they're dealing with it, you know, day in, day out. It can't just be, you know, that slotted in for that half hour, that three quarter of an hour, because you just don't know how the, um, the person who you're caring for, how they're going to be that day. most difficult thing for me is deal with uh, dementia because they don't want a shower today, they won't want a shower tomorrow, yesterday was the same, but obviously you cannot leave them like that. It's quite difficult, okay, it's, it's sometimes it's exhausting actually. You have to think and what will you want, okay? if you have a problem like that. It's very difficult for the carers at the moment because we've got real-time monitoring, which means that the carers have to log in and log out at every visit. Um, that's part of our contract and we haven't got a problem doing that. But th the issues are that, you know, um, a carer could go in and find someone on the floor and the last thing on their mind is to actually log in and out. So I think 
that's kind of taken away a lot of the a lot of the personal kind of side of it if you like and a lot of the service users uh, can be quite upset by that as well. In the beginning when we first started it, it was just awful we just could not get our head around just keeping to the the times that the, the council had actually put on us. We're always rushing around which leaves us feeling a bit as if we're not giving our full attention to the clients, um, less compassionate maybe, that's what we wanted to be. It's all fine and well being task orientated, but you have to think of the emotional side as well and the companionship. Loneliness, I think there must be thousands of people in Edinburgh sitting either A without a carer or not getting the emotional support that they that they need as well. I laugh when I see some of the requests coming through from the council and I'm looking 15 minutes and I'm going, really? That much in 15 minutes? Not a chance. I won't entertain that because I won't entertain it for my staff. You know, you, you see how some of the clients do flourish with the care, the care that they receive. Scott, for example, um, and he's had the experience of good care and not so good care. Yeah, obviously they are, they are busy, but, uh, but they still find the time, you know, if you want to talk over with something, they can do it. A lot of them actually talk while they're working. What I'm suggesting, you know, about try the gym and see how that goes. And so I did try the gym and I it's actually, I actually enjoyed it a lot more than what I expected to. I think it gives me more of a life with having, with having the, the, the care. It will be easier if the people around our clients know what we have to do. I don't think Care at Home gets the recognition that it deserves. We are carers first and foremost who have to have specialist knowledge about any number of illnesses. We have to deal with GPs, we have to deal with district nurses, we have to deal with families. The, the perception of carers is that we are just carers, and we're so much more than that. At the end of the day, when we've carried out all our tasks, 99% of our clients will always say thank you very much. Thank you for making me feel good today. I love being a carer. I love making people happy. Every day is a school day. We're always learning and we've got the opportunity to do great things. I absolutely love it. I'm really passionate. It's not a job. And if anybody who's working in care just sees this strictly as it's a job, it's, it's, it's a career. And I will, mm, I think, never do anything, anything else, OK? I'm really happy in my job. You're helping someone. That's end of the story. That's enough.